Assalamu guys, Ifan back again with another video and this video is going to be an introductory video into electronics. Uh, we will be discussing the three most common components used in uh, electronic circuits. One is the resistor, number two, the capacitor, and number three, the inductor. So let's get started. Okay, so now let's see how do we read the value of a resistor, okay? Now, what you do is, um, when you look at a, uh, at a resistor, it will have different color bands on it, okay? And that's uh, basically those colored bands represent the value of the resistor. Now, uh, what you do is you hold the resistor to so the end where the bands are closer to your left, okay? Uh, just like we uh, showed in, in, the, in the figure, uh, uh, ignore the black band that's on the extreme right. Uh, I'm talking about the red, blue, yellow, and the black band. Those need to be, uh, the resistance needs to be held. So those bands are to your left. Now, <clears throat> the first two uh, colored bands represent the first two uh, uh, values of the uh, or first two digits of the resistor. And these the resistors are uh, valued in ohms. Okay. Now, uh, on some resistors would have a three or four bands, and some would have uh, five or six bands. Now, on a three or four band uh, resistor, the third band is the multiplier. Uh, multiplier would be uh, the exponent of ten raised to the power of. Okay. So, as you can see, uh, you have multipliers uh, one, ten, hundred, you know, thousand, ten thousand, hundred thousand, and a million. Now this is on the uh, three to four band. That's the third band, which is the multiplier. Now the fourth band would on a three to four uh, on, on such a register would be the tolerance. Okay, or how accurate the the value of the resistor is. Now certain resistors have higher precision. Okay, so they have extra bands, and that the extra band is for the next significant. Uh, digit the third significant digit in the previous case there were only two significant digits and then you have the multiplier here you have three significant digits and then you have the multiplier now there is a special type of resistor which is a variable resistor now this resistor has the has a circular resistive track and you have a wiper that you know lies across on it and as it moves across uh, as it goes further away from one terminal the resistance increases now uh, if we have three terminals on it uh, the terminal number one which is labeled in uh, in red that will connect that to the VCC now the center terminal is where the output is going to come from okay now and we have and that is labeled in green and then we have a third terminal which is labeled in uh, in blue and we'll uh, short that to ground now when the wiper is uh, when the knob is turned the wiper rotates on this uh, resistance track and uh, depending on how far away from uh, you know uh, terminal number one or terminal number three the wiper is that would determine whether the resistance is less to ground or less to VCC. If the uh, wiper is towards terminal number one and further away from terminal number three, that would mean that the resistance between the wiper and the terminal one would be less. And so uh, terminal number two would be getting a value closer to VCC. Now, once when you rotate the knob, and uh, the wiper comes closer to uh, terminal three as compared to terminal one. Now the resistance to ground, which is connected to terminal three, is less, and the resistance to VCC, which is connected to terminal number one, is more. So the terminal number two, which is the output, would be the vo the voltage at 
terminal number two would be closer to ground. Now, this type of uh, resistor is commonly used in dimmers uh, for lights or volume controls and radios. Uh, you know, it, as you turn the knob, you're basically uh, changing the, the resistance, the, you're varying the resistance, and that uh, makes the light go dim or the volume go up or down. Okay, so that's a special kind of resistor that you know that you can actually change the value of. Okay, now uh, in these type of resistors, that you don't you don't have uh, color coding. Uh, the value of the resistor is just usually just written on it, and uh, so it's it's much easier to read. One of the basic properties of electromagnetism is when you have a current flowing through a wire, you create a magnetic field around the wire. When you have a wire wrapped around in the shape of a coil and you have current flowing through that wire, it's going to create a magnetic field. Now, uh, the direction of the magnetic field will flow from the North Pole to the South Pole. Uh, you can see those uh, you know, those uh, spherical uh, lines that uh, have arrows on them. So the, the arrows are designating the direction of the magnetic field. Now the uh, current is entering from the left hand side and going through the coil and coming out from the right hand side. So the direction of the of the current is from left to right, and therefore. Uh, the north is going to be on the left-hand side and the south pole is going to be on the right-hand side. An inductor tries to resist any change in current, either positive or negative. Any change in current, the inductor is going to try and resist any change. Uh, when the current is going up, uh, the inductor is resisting that increase in current by using some of the current, uh, extra current to st store as uh, increased magnetic field and thereby uh, reducing the impact of the increase in current but over time the current does go up now conversely uh, when the current is going down again the inductor tries to resist the, the drop in current by utilizing the stored energy in its magnetic field but obviously uh, over time the current does go down but if you see the two graphs at the bottom uh, one shows uh, when the current is going up, it does not go up as a straight line, there's a curve. That's because the inductor is trying to resist the increase in the current. Now the second graph, the one on the right, uh, shows when the current is, is going down, then again, the inductor is resisting that, that, that drop in current uh, by utilizing some of the energy stored in this uh, magnetic field. And that is why the, the drop in current is not again, is, is, again, it's not a straight line, but it's a curve. That's, uh, and these two are both curves because the inductor by nature is trying to resist any change in current, positive or negative. A capacitor is uh, a very common uh, electronic component. We have already discussed two other common electronic components, the inductor and the resistor. So this is the third type of uh, common electronic component, and this is called a capacitor. Uh, this basically has the capability or capacity to store electrical energy, okay? Uh, very similar to a small rechargeable battery. A capacitor basically has two or more plates, conductive plates, parallel plates, which are not connected to each other and they are not touching each other, but they actually are separated uh, from each other uh, by the use of some good insulation. Uh, it could be like wax paper, it could be ceramic, it could be plastic, or it also can be in the, in the case of uh, electrolytic uh, capacitors, uh, some form of liquid gel. Okay, so these the layers are you know are not touching each other and there's, there's a separation. Now the figure below shows uh, the graphical uh, design of, of, a, of a capacitor. On each side, you have the two uh, the, the plates. In the middle, you have the dielectric, and this is what's separating the two plates. 
and then you are you connected it to the battery and it's restoring you know restoring a charge and then you also see what the symbol of this uh, component is now let's quickly go over what a value of a capacitor is now the capacitance or the value of a capacitor is the amount of obviously is the amount of charge that it can store per unit of voltage the higher the voltage the more charge it will be able to store so uh, the amount of charge that it can a capacitor can store per unit of voltage per unit of voltage is volt so the the, the amount of charge a capacitor can uh, store when it's applied when uh, a volt of voltage of one volt is applied that is the capacitance of a capacitor now a scientist uh, by the name of faraday had done a lot of research into this and therefore um, in his memory uh, the 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 unit of measuring capacitance is farad okay the symbol is f uh, now what is a farad a farad is the capacity of a capacitor to store one coulomb of charge when you apply a voltage or a potential of one volt now uh, if you ask what what a coulomb of charge is one coulomb of charge is is that charge that is transferred when you have one ampere of current flowing for one second okay now uh, the farad is a, is a very large uh, figure so that's further subdivided into picofarads nanofarads and microfarads and uh, the table uh, being shown on the screen now shows you how to go from picofarads to nanofarads and microfarads So now what we'll do is we'll look at how to read the values of, uh, of a capacitor. Now, there are various types of capacitors, so let's uh, go one by one. First, we'll look at the electrolytic uh, capacitors. Now, these are very easy. The, the value of these type of capacitors is very easy or very simple to read uh, because there's no fancy color codes or uh, any other codes that you have to uh, worry about. The value is written directly on the enclosure. Uh, these are you know slightly you know bigger than other types of uh, capacitors and therefore the capacity is higher than the other one and they're usually in uh, microfarads okay uh, and uh, since there's a, there uh, uh, the, the dielectric in these type of uh, capacitors is uh, is an electrolytic uh, gel the maximum voltage that these capacitors can be operated under is also mentioned on the body of the, uh, the capacitor because if you uh, expose them to a voltage higher than that, the electrolytic uh, gel breaks down and that causes a short circuit. So they, they'll also show you, tell you what the maximum working voltage should be. Now we come to a second type of uh, capacitors. These are the ceramic capacitors. Now they are much, much smaller than the electrolytic uh, capacitors that we just talked about. And because of their small size, uh, the full value uh, cannot does not fit on, the, on 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 them. So what you do is you have a three-digit coding system. Okay. Now the first two digits represent the value, uh, and the the third digit represents the number of zeros to add to the end of the the value. Okay. And the value is in picofarads. So uh, let's see if we can read this. Uh capacitance value that we have up here. Uh, the ceramic capacitor is labeled as 103. Now, one zero, that would be the base value, and the three means number of zeros to add to the end. So you have 10 and then three zeros, picofarads. So 10,000 picofarads, which is also 10 nanofarads or 0.01 microfarad. So now let's talk about a third type of uh, capacitor. It's the polyester capacitors. Uh, polyester capacitors are also just like the ceramic capacitors, a lot smaller than the electrolytic uh, ones. Now, even the labeling scheme used on these uh, polyester capacitors is the same as those on the ceramic uh, capacitors. The only difference is uh, the polyesters are always always have three digits instead of 
uh, ceramic, which at times have three or may also have two. Now, uh, but the, the difference is they also have extra letters or numbers that uh, tell us about the, uh, the the working voltage that you're supposed to use on them or the tolerance of how you know how much variance in the value uh, these capacitors may have. Uh, the, the chart shows you uh, the different uh, uh, codes. Uh, you have uh, codes that give you the, the working voltage, like uh, 1H2A, 2C, 2D. These give you the, the codes for voltages. Uh, for example, 1H is uh, 50 volts, 2A is 100 volts, and so on and so forth. Now, the third letter is gives you the uh, the tolerance. Uh, that would be whether it uh, has 1% tolerance or 2%, 3%, 5%, so F, G, H, J. These letters would give you the tolerance of the capacitance. Okay, so let's see if we can read uh, the, the capacitance on or the value of this capacitor that's shown above. Uh, the 2A means 100 volts. If you refer to the table on the right, 2A means 100 volts, so it's the working voltage can be up to 100 volts. Now the numbers 104, the base value is 10, and 4 means uh, 4 zeros after the 10, so that would be a value of uh, 10,000, sorry, 100,000 picofarads, which is also uh, 100 nano or 0.1 microfarad. Now the letter J at the end, that's the tolerance. Now, if you look again, if you refer to the table on the right, J is 5%. So what that means is this uh, particular uh, polyester uh, capacitor is uh, of 0.1 microfarad and uh, can be used up to 100 volts and uh, has a tolerance of 5%. That's it for this uh, video. Uh, if you like this video, please kindly give it a thumbs up. And if you would like to see more videos like this, please kindly subscribe and make sure you hit that bell icon so you'll always receive notifications when new videos are uploaded. And if you have any feedback, please do let us know in the comment section below. Thank you.